guys. Welcome back to Two Girls, One Bong. The podcast that's better when you're stoned, and I will just staple your bottom lip to the back of your head if you're not. My name is Mac Dizzle. I'm Joya. <laughs> if you're new here, uh, welcome. We are Two Girls, One Bong, and we've made a career making stoner content for nearly a decade. Whoa. Yeah. Um, if you're returning, What's Welcome up? Welcome back. Welcome yeah. Welcome back. Good to see you. Um, and shout out to, here we are, our very first podcast episode on YouTube. Uh, how Siri unprofessional thought, is this I woman? know. She thought I was talking to her, but I wasn't. So I'm like, shut up, bitch. <laughs> anyway. So this is not actually our very first podcast. For those of you who don't know, we've been doing this podcast for over a year, um, but it has had a different home. And unfortunately, we've been evicted from that house. So Not now we're moving. But literally everyone. <laughs> yeah, literally <laughs> everyone's been evicted. Um, we are now moving our podcast here to YouTube. You can still find us on all of your favorite podcasting apps, Spotify, Apple, whatever. We're there. Um, but before we dive into the podcast today, I feel like there is a quite large elephant in the room that needs to be stroked and addressed. Is it the bong ramp I'm about to take? No, that's but that's a different elephant that I'd like to address. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you are right. I feel the elephant. I see the elephant, and the elephant is is yeah. lurking, yeah. lurking hard. She sure is. Um. So while I pack this bowl, you want you can take your bong grip. Actually, no, you have to wait for me. No, wait. For we me. do it together. Yeah. Yeah. So anyone out there who's watching along, I don't. Ooh, we're on YouTube now. I got to be careful about how I speak. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be careful. So if you didn't know, this podcast used to be on uh, our site called WeedTube. Some stuff has happened. We'll get into that after this bong rip. But we are no longer on there. And unfortunately, because we are no longer on there, we do have to censor ourselves a little bit more. Man, we were wild on there. We really just said whatever the fuck we wanted about whatever the fuck we wanted. Yeah, I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. That's what happens when... You don't allow children to overtake a space on the internet. But it was a kid-free place, and I loved it. But that being said, cheers. I have che my brand new Laganja Estranja <gasps> ah! bong here. Oh, my God. Is that what? I think that there may have been. I got a package that I was supposed <gasps> to sign for, and I wasn't home. I and bet I it was that. I was thinking, I'm like, what is that? What did I order that I have to sign for? But I bet you it's my like box. <laughs> Mine will be arriving soon, too. You're going to have so oh, many cute new pieces of glass. I can't wait. Okay, cheers, cheers. y'all. Cheers. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was my first rip of the night. <laughs> Mine, too. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Even I have this image of Mac Dizzle in my head of just this invincible fucking bitch, which she is like 90% of the time. But that other 10% is when she takes a really fat rip. <laughs> she has to fucking really. I have to like gather it. myself and talk to my ancestors for a moment. Yeah. Oh, my ancestors aren't that lit. Gotta be. Honest. I was going to say, do you like want to talk to them? Because personally, oh. I. <laughs> It's I'd like the one manager who like always hangs over you. Is like, what are you doing? Yeah, those are my that's, ancestors. That's you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, they they have like a you know a this haircut. Oh my god! And they're like, just you know those those caps that the judges wear, like no. the George Washington three thousand yes. type vibe. The ones that they actually do wear yes, in the like courtrooms in Britain. Still to this day yeah. dress up in these silly little outfits and these silly little do they still wear the wigs no they literally they do i don't know exactly who <laughs> wears them but i know that people still wear those wigs in no, I gotta court look it up. i gotta look it up in who, england who look wears it. the wigs in court yeah in england because 100 percent wig um i need to find out who these people are who wears wigs in court in england put in england british british lawyers Lawyers, huh? Yeah, look at this photo. <laughs> Wait, you're gonna need to send it to me. I can't see it all the way. 
But I fully, <laughs> I just watched something recently. It was like a courtroom drama that I saw the commercial for, and they are fucking wearing those fucking wigs. Well, and, and it's, it's just like, really, it's really funny because the wigs aren't even good wigs. Like, it's not like a good lace front. Like, you can still see their hair sticking out from underneath. You yeah. can still see the regular like, hair underneath. You're not fucking fooling anybody. Even if you were for us, I mean, obviously, God, I hope no one actually has that hair nowadays and their natural hair. Could you imagine someone walking around with Why? George Washington hair but it's their actual hair why are we doing this i cannot <laughs> it feels fake i feel like this is actually just like a deep fake by britain to be like oh yeah we're just silly over here but they don't actually do this there's no way um i i don't know dude it's how do you take they... yourself seriously in court while wearing that on your head Maybe it's literally the opposite for them. Maybe, like, if somebody has their regular hair on, like, no one takes them seriously. <laughs> I don't... That is, like, really, you know... Oh, my God. A, I a vote we do an episode with those wigs. <laughs> Coming soon. I am so down. <laughs> I am so down. I know. I'm, I'm, <sighs> I'm really dead in my heart. It is hysterical what they're making these people. These are bad wigs, guys. These are... They look like they're made from horse hair. They or like are. possibly actual just they're probably not even made from hair i mean it's they're not. definitely they they gotta be, be synthetic oh my god imagine they're giving them like full human hair wigs to these british lawyers they're going into the <laughs> caskets of the fucking <laughs> of the old people from just england shaving them down yeah no they're not no they're not they're well they're yeah skipping them yeah oh <laughs> Yikes! There's there's human flesh under these wigs. Is what you're saying? That's horrifying. that's what I was picturing. All right, sorry for that. Quick, this is uh, if you're new here, yeah, th that kind of stuff happens often. The <laughs> I have ADHD, and Julia is an enabler. <laughs> Honestly, I don't want to be one of those people that's like I have a freaking medical condition that's undiagnosed condi yeah it's okay but you the way my though. brain <laughs> operates i really it's like there's no way i don't i think i just don't have like a super severe case of it but yeah man, I, I think that there's there's like certain disorders and such like ocd and things that are trivialized to the point where it's actually pretty damaging to people who do have ocd me yeah, real ocd yeah like ADHD for me has always just been like this silly little thing in my life anyways. It's never been like super detrimental to the point where like I can't like, yes, it does it affect me negatively all the fucking time, but it's not that serious. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to take the trash you out. Know what it never was. <laughs> you that know what it serious. never was? You know what it never was? Um, but yeah, I mean, and I definitely like I know for sure because okay, I know for sure I don't have like bad ADHD because if I take an Adderall I you're cracked it, out it affects me yes <laughs> it's and, like a drug I, I remember hearing somebody talk about it a long time ago and they were like it calms me down it helps me to like be like normal mm -hmm. and I was like what yeah was um, that me was I the one that said that to you no it wasn't okay <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a long time ago. I used um, to give Joya my Adderall when I was prescribed them. And hell yeah. I was just oh, telling geez. somebody. <laughs> and thank you for sharing. Um, I was just telling somebody the other day how like when we first met, I so I was in call I was a sophomore in college and we obviously became close very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting in the library during finals time so this is like well this is probably three months into our friendship i guess mm -hmm. i was in the library and we were like t just texting about just getting to know each other mm -hmm. and like sending like long ass fucking <laughs> i remember like ass. typing up yes like pair just like you know yeah we were just like fresh you know fresh friendship yeah, yeah, like yeah. just getting to know each other and yeah. like yeah, but uh, my point was that I was on Adderall, um, and Max <laughs> was obviously on it. She was she was still taking it at the time, so she was at work in her cubicle, and I was in the library during finals time. And um, no, Joya is unprofessional. That's two interruptions. Oh my, God. my dogs are also unprofessional, but not as unprofessional as Joya. <laughs> they have no control over their professionalism. Those are animals, okay. <laughs> I like I want to mute my computer but then I feel like it's gonna mute you wait can you say something uh can you hear me oh but great it's not mute okay good <laughs> gorgeous 
<laughs> oh, so. Okay, so let's talk about what happened with WeTube. Um, elephant in the room. Sorry, we made you wait there so long, Mr. Elephant. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, so some things have happened, some things have developed. For those of you who don't know, um, myself and a friend, Aaron Richard, the gay stoner, started a company called the WeTube five years ago um and it was in the wake of everyone getting deleted off of youtube and there was a ton of censorship going around and this was about five years ago it was really really rampant in the cannabis industry and the psychedelic industry and just really the industry in general and we both personally experienced deletions and all of this other horrible stuff because this is how we were making our money was our youtube channels and when we got deleted we basically were like okay how do we help the community right now because we're not the only people suffering so we created it this was platform like one after another after another it was after, after another. another and people it, it got like their channels back after like period. do you remember silence hippie got her channel back after like two years mm-hmm. same with it, strain central i think he got it his back took too. years for them to get it back though years to get it back so it was insane but we started this this company called WeTube, which was supposed to be a competitor for youtube and our aim was to make it a safe place for people to upload their cannabis content and, you know, an unregulated, uncensored place for that kind of stuff. Um, And as you can imagine, unfortunately, when you create a site like that, that doesn't have as much censorship as other places, sometimes people take advantage of that and bad things can happen. So one of the reasons we have to shut this site down is because there is a ton of illegal activity going on there. We're constantly removing things, constantly taking things down because People are trying to sell things. It's just like a lot of illegal stuff going on there, and it is problematic, and we do not want to be liable for that. So uh, having to shut that down. More so, though, the biggest reason we're shutting this thing down is it costs thousands of dollars every month to keep this running. We have a team of like eight to ten people running this entire site. They're not expensive. $100,000 a month is what we spend. We spend $100,000 a month paying for this site to stay open because data storage you guys i don't think you realize how fucking expensive data storage is and that's essentially what youtube instagram twitter all of these places are they're just massive massive really pretty data storages um and so we unfortunately don't have billions and billions of dollars and a massive team of a thousand fucking workers and tech people And so for the last five years, we've been just struggling the fuck along, doing whatever we can, trying to stay open. And that was like to just like literally for the community to have somewhere to like have a home. Like the WeTube was created out of necessity and Mm -hmm. it was kept open out of necessity, like Mm -hmm. somewhere for people to fucking go. Like WeTube was never... Of course, all businesses want to make money. Like that's the point of a business, but... WeTube specifically was created because, like, literally out of necessity. So it was, like, not a freaking – that was just something that I remember people saying, like, years ago. Like, oh, the WeTube must make so much money. Like, they all have so much, like, whatever. No, because like- we would do crowdfunding. We would, we would do crowdfunding within the community. We'd be like, hey, guys, we're trying to do this with the site. We have this set up. If you want to make a donation towards it, please help us. Um, And so people assumed that we were just taking all of these donations and like going on fun trips and doing all that, like, which is insane because I made all of my money from either content creation or OnlyFans. Like that is, I have not gotten a single fucking paycheck from WeTube ever in my life. Just, Uh, well, we used to do creator payouts. So if Mm -hmm. you got a certain number of views on the site, you would start gaining revenue from that. We ditched that model because we obviously couldn't fucking afford it. Um, but I did get my creator checks. As a creator on the site, I generated enough views to start getting a couple checks. But as far as like an owner or somebody yeah. who worked for them, no. I, I put money in. I never, ever, 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 ever took money out. Not once. Mm-hmm. So let lay that to rest. Let it go. I, this lovely house that you see behind me, guess who paid for it? My vagina. Thank you. <laughs> um, so move on with that move on with that narrative honestly i haven't heard anybody say that in a long time but i just wanted to put that out there because yeah yeah, i think people have images of things online images of people and and companies and like it's just like i we would like to be completely transparent and honest and know for people to know 
the truth that there was we so were just, much work put into weed too. We were just dumping money into it, just yeah. pouring and bleeding money out. And from honestly, it. luckily there was an investor for the last like couple yeah. of years mm-hmm. to to keep the doors open because honestly yes. they would have been the doors shut a long closed. time ago. Shut yeah. a long time ago without our investor, but right. we had to make a tough decision because we just didn't want to keep draining these pockets when we didn't feel like it was really going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and the amount of money we would have needed to keep pushing forward and doing the things we needed to do would have been in the hundreds of millions. Like it's so expensive to run a proper site like this. Um, and also the scape is not the same anymore. Like the internet has changed in their censorship. They have laxed in a lot of different ways in a lot of different places to where we are not as much of a necessity as we were at the time. We People yeah. weren't being sh- struck down by lightning and or right. they, they they aren't anymore as much like yes instagrams go down yes things like that go down but it's a lot easier to get back i get my instagram back every single time joya you has not yeah. I, I think so i think you. we made a mistake with so yours you. joya i really do think we made a mistake with yours i think we need to be a lot more proactive with it and do it a lot more frequently when it first happened because after those 30 days i think they just flush it out well here's the thing i still can't change my app back interesting so i know that it's in there yeah because i cannot change my app yeah so i don't know but um but yeah, so censorship obviously still does exist it's just not on the level that it was and so like i can upload mo- pretty much anything i would upload on weedtube i can upload on youtube now they just uh age restrict, age restrict it, it. Right. they don't delete my channel they don't do all this they've gotten a lot better with their technology to understand that our content isn't bad it's just not for children and that's the problem with these freaking apps is there's so many kids everywhere. I hate them. But yeah. honestly, I think I told you this. I think I said this on the podcast, but yeah, starting over on a TikTok that was completely like not had nothing to do with anything that I was doing. Literally, it was <laughs> teenager after teenager after teenager after teenager, like just like over and over and over. And I'm like, what in the fuck? It like, makes me feel no. weird. Like, yeah. stop. I don't want to be on the same like. There's and no way that's some the gross same. pervy man getting on TikTok for the first time. His <sighs> algorithm is already set, Hanny. He said, "Oh, yeah. perfect." And it, yeah, and it was all like it's not like, you know, kids being kids. It's like teenage it's girls like the like dancing, coming, it's like yeah, the teenage the girls coming up. into their yeah, their girl, their their womanhood, their Which freaking, is fine. I want yeah, them to which do is that. great. But it, I yes, I don't want to watch it though. And I don't want <laughs> old men to be able to watch it either. Yeah. It's fucking weird. Stop posting your little babies and kids all over the internet and making social media accounts for them because I promise you there are perverts doing disgusting things with those photos. I just had I just remembered something in you saying that I was going to I was trying to show a friend a TikTok the other day. And so I was looking through my likes and she was like over my shoulder and she was like, there's a lot of kids on there. (laughs) (laughs) It's like. Because I just like, you know, I like babies and I like kids. And people, when people post their funny fucking, dude, I'm going to like a video of a cute ass baby or something funny or them. No, oh my God. Like, the you're part of the problem. Yeah, I literally <laughs> am because I was like, okay, that just made me sound like so like whatever. But I totally am like, I am totally going to like a video of a kid being funny or cute or anything. But no, I will click yeah. not interested. Don't show me your fucking kids. Yeah, <laughs> I also there's this lady that I follow that does um like it. She makes videos like uh, I don't know what the word. She's like acting as her child, like making fun of her kids, like saying uh-huh. things that her kids say, and that cracks me the fuck up too. So yeah, I think that's just because I yeah I like you like, I kids. like kids. I do. You really fucking like they, kids, they but... bring me joy. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> oh my god um, also you posted a story of your nephew uh the other day him saying he wants to fight me and i was like at the stove cooking dinner and i like um was watching your story and i turned the sound up so that i could like you know hear your little cute little nephew saying who wants to fight me and at the very beginning he screamed like ah! yeah and yeah all three of my dogs <laughs> freaked out they all got so like it startled all of them it was so funny bro um real talk kind of nervous about my nephew he might be evil like 
his his stepmother is absolute or stepmother his actual mom sorry (laughs) his birth mom yeah his stepmom is dope that's my brother's wife love her uh his actual mom his biological mom is an absolute just yeah i uh there's one person on this planet who i will fight on site and it is her it is her i hate her um my parents won't won't let me I, I've been barred from seeing her because I will not shut my mouth and I will say something fucking crazy. So, anyways, That's what fuck she deserves. You, Stacey. Fuck you, Stacy. If I Stacey, knew your you last piece name, of I shit. Put it in the song. Yeah. Honestly, uh, I totally because we have this thing too. Because my my ex brother in law is the same thing for me. I I I I what's that word? I dream. I daydream about what I would do if I ever saw him oh in real life. Oh, like. Just- the fantasies oh, yes just I dragging I dragging her by the hair down yeah. the street oh it'd be yeah. great that'd be so yeah. nice i hope dave and stacy go find a place in hell to stay together honestly forever. they should get together they seem like they have a lot in common yeah i yeah. in the sense of that they're both fucking degenerates <laughs> Yeah, and I, oh my god, I want to say I literally, something so evil and mean just came into my mind right now, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I that's going to hurt other people too, so right. we're not going to, we're not going to say that all people that do the things that they do are bad. No, I know plenty sure. of people that do the things that they do that are fine. No, Those I was going to say that maybe Stacy's an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, and Dave is a drug addict. Maybe they will. She almost killed herself drinking. That's what's crazy. Like, she was literally on her deathbed. Maybe they will. <laughs> like not you know anyway. i am not gonna read that out loud no, and please. what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a cute little turn away from this i would love to smoke a bong rip with you Me too. um rest in peace we tube it was an amazing run and you know what i actually saw this really 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 cool comment um where somebody was like i don't look at we tube as a failure and they said you changed the skate for censorship and you literally Put your foot down in a place where billion dollar companies were just washing everyone away and we made a difference. And I do believe that the, the, the scape of censorship has changed and I am certain we too has something to do with that. We weren't just some tiny little nobody. We were very tiny and we are nobody, but we fucking made an impact that yes. much. I am sure of. we definitely did make an impact. And so whoever left that comment, if you're here right now watching this video, I just want you to know, like, that really made my day so great. <laughs> really? I totally, I know exactly what comment you're talking about. I saw it as well. And I thought the same thing. Because that's never a perspective that I've thought about. I've always just kind of looked at WeTube as failing. I was like, God damn, like, we weren't able to stay open. We weren't able to do this. We weren't able to do this. And instead of being like, sh- I, it really just helped me shift my my focus and my perception of the situation because we definitely did do something. We definitely made a There's a made lot a to be proud of. Yeah, Like, for there's sure. a lot to be proud of. Yeah. So shout out WeTube. We love you so much. Rest in peace. You deserve peace now. <laughs> you're, you're in a better place, WeTube. <laughs> Cheers. Ooh. <coughs> Amazing. Oh my goodness. Well, now that we got that elephant out of the room, uh, do you have anything new that's happening in your life, friend? What's our first thing on YouTube? Tell the people what you're up to lately. Like for okay. work and stuff. Okay. So I do have like two other jobs besides, <laughs> um, which I also, it's funny because yeah, now I do, <laughs> I just work kind of like a normal person does. Which is funny because in my head, I'm like, I work since like so much work. Have you heard the TikTok sound where it's like, I tried to girl boss and then I too hard and now I have like a real job. Yeah, that's that's how I feel. I'm like, why did I do this to myself? But also, I am somebody who like really loves working in a team. I love working with people and I also like enjoy like working on projects and Mm -hmm. so I yeah I have two other jobs besides like influencing I don't really consider the podcast a job it's more of just like a fun time that me and Mag just look at to hang out yeah (laughs) um but I work for Sierra Social Club which is a consumption lounge opening up in Denver this year we're also working on 
I'm gonna I'm gonna clarify what Cirrus Social Club. Is oh what she yeah, said. I, you, they, <laughs> they heard me. Cirrus. Some people might understand the fry. They might not understand the fry. <laughs> it's, it's an Cirrus. Accent, you know? it's Cirrus Social Club. C I R R U S. <laughs> Um, and it's opening up in Denver over the summer. We're also working on a Vegas location, but I do, um, I am a special events coordinator and I also do strategic partnerships, which means like I manage vendor relationships and I'm doing product sourcing. Um, and so it just like has given me more, um, experience in like a more professional setting. And then and I like- also, oh, go ahead. Well, just real quick, like this is what Joy has always been really good at. So I'm, it's just very exciting that one of our friends, Aaron, the guy who actually started WeTube with me, he's opening yeah. the Cirrus Social Club. Shout out the gay stoner. Um, but he, uh, I'm going to keep calling that him that forever. And but, I think you should. And I will. Because that's what he is. <laughs> just the gayest stoner. Yeah. Um, but he, Joy has always been really good at like coordinating and planning things like Anytime I go on a trip somewhere, whether she's with me or not, she plans it. Like, she literally plans the whole thing for me. So yeah. she's really, really good at it. And I'm just very happy that you found yourself in a in a place where you get to do that professionally. Honestly, that is so, yes, because like that was something that events and event coordination, things like that, yes, planning, it's something that's just always come very naturally to me. Mm-hmm. And when I did, I, I threw – three events when I was still in California Mm -hmm. and every single time it didn't feel like work and that's saying I'm saying like I threw three events from the top all the way down like it was like Like I did everything she exactly I mean I voted the event vended the event got everyone set up decorated coordinated everything I was the main contact for everything and that was just something that yeah came so naturally to me like it didn't feel there was no part of the work that was daunting and Mm -hmm. like that's something that I found in content creation online which I still like it's funny because now that I'm doing other things I see content creation and I'm like oh I miss you Um, (laughs) like I I would totally like it's something that does bring me joy now Mm -hmm. but I think when it was like the only thing that I was doing and that I had to do to make money it didn't feel like I there there was a lot of daunt or whatever yeah. the fuck the word is. Like, it was like that. And so with events, it's never been like that. So that mm-hmm. is definitely something that I've that I've known. After, like, the second time that I did something successfully and with a smile on my face, I was like, okay, I think I could do that, like, mm. forever. Like, that That's could what. be something that I do forever. So thank you for seeing that and you're knowing that. You're so welcome. <laughs> but you also, also do. Yeah. yeah, do. I also do social media for a restaurant in Austin, a pizza restaurant. Um, which, yeah, it's like, I'm talking about how, yeah, content creation is like not my, it still isn't like, I definitely, I think everyone should go follow that page. What's the page? I know. So I've been honestly, it's salvation underscore pizza. No, we're just do- hardcore plugging it. Go, f- I know, but go follow I, salvation for some reason, underscore pizza. <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm cheating. Like I, I totally don't- understand, but like, it doesn't matter if you're cheating. Okay. Yeah, I'm cheating for you. Um, so salvation (laughs) underscore pizza. I just think it would be really hilarious if it just had this huge following of people that always engaged with its posts and just had like this big social media presence of people that just don't live in Texas. That's that's why I'm like, okay, like that's what makes you feel like it's cheating because I'm like, not everyone's going to be in Austin. In Texas, it could be like a destination for me now. I'm excited to try it. After following the page, I'm like, God damn, I want to go there and have some drinks and eat some pizza. Yeah, we're going to do that for sure next time. I am so excited to do that. So, hey, if you're listening to this podcast, follow Salvation (laughs) Salvation underscore pizza. (laughs) Also, I'm also on TikTok at Salvation Pizza on TikTok too. Yeah, if if you're in Texas near Austin... We That's have a location on yes on Rainy Street, which is a totally it's a pop and part of town, <laughs> and then also in the Domain, which is like also another pop and part of town. So Period. they are really good locations. They're perfectly located for wherever you're at in Austin. Sell it, um, sell it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they're open till two on the weekends. Ew. Ew. Open late. <laughs> I'm like a clerk. Yeah, because they're both they're both in parts like the one at the domain. The domain is like um, Victoria Gardens on steroids. It's like a big outdoor mall. It's like mm. really beautiful, mm-hmm. and it's there's a strip of bars, 
and Salvation Pizza is right there on the street with the bars. It's like literally like there's that's where everyone goes to go out at the domain. Mm-hmm. It's right there. And that's and so dope because it it is a bar and it has food. Right, exactly. And they're open until two AM too. On like, the weekend. It, tell me tell me a better food than pizza when you're drunk. Like yeah. arguably tacos are up there. Yeah. But pizza? Yeah. yeah. Cheese. And the, bread. the slices too. They the slices are like this big. If you look oh, at like my your head. Yes. They're huge. <laughs> Um, so yeah, thanks, Mac Dizzle. I so welcome. <laughs> love and appreciate you. But oh, see, um, I'm getting okay, a well, call, the de- but my phone is silenced. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Whatever. What were you gonna say? I was gonna ask you if you have any updates, but I guess you're on YouTube pretty regularly. Yeah, the people on this channel, I feel like, pretty much know what's happening in my yeah. life. Not, not, not much. <laughs> You know, I'm just staying out here getting high and popping this puss. And consistently uploading for a I while have now. Been. It's yep. been like four months of mostly consistent. Yeah, uploading, just missing like a, so. one here or there. Yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah. God. And I've even, Good. Yeah. And I've done double uploads some weeks too. Good so. job, Max Dizzle. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, I think back like at the beginning, which I there's got to be somebody on here listening that's been here since the beginning. Oh, for we sure. We used to upload twice a week, every week. Well, we would film. So I was in the here's the thing. It was way fucking easier because a we would film like a 20 minute video and I would edit eight minutes and we would just upload quick little seven minute, eight minute videos, maybe 15. Um, And we would film two in a day, you yeah. know? We would yeah. film two in a day. So that made it so much easier because I was just sitting on the content all right there. Um, yeah. But that, yeah, no. And I had a job too. I was going to work and editing these things at my desk on yeah. the clock, getting paid yeah. to edit. It was lit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If there was a you lot. should steal, company time. And period. She said what the fuck she said. And I um, did. Well, we definitely the next time when I'm in town for 420, we need to plan to film. Yes, for and, sure. Oh my God, maybe you can come up to the house. We'll talk about this because that house is sick as fuck. Cool, cool. cool. Anyway, well, yeah, no, no, no. So, um, Aaron hit me up to possibly dab bartend. Okay, dope. Um, for we will absolutely talk about this. Yes, definitely. Cool. So. Because um, I'm the event coordinator, so I'll be your point of contact. Mm, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, that's yeah. up. That's what's up with me. And that's, and that's what's up with me. Joy <laughs> is up with me. Uh, not much. I'm trying to think of like anything. I'm really trying to buy a house in the next six months, but I really want the prices to go down and I need the mortgage rate to go down. I'm just like sitting on money right now and I just want to put it into a house so I can stop paying rent. That's my biggest spiel, but I feel like everybody already knows that. Yeah, you just, but you're doing the right thing by just waiting for the perfect time. Do you have a realtor? I have a phone number for one, and I was supposed you to have a meeting. You need to get a realtor. I'm afraid that they're going to try to talk me into buying sooner than I want. Then tell them, I'm not doing, I. you tell them, I want your opinion and expertise on this, but this is my timeline. Yeah. Because the realtors know what's going on like yeah you do. but i also feel like a lot of realtors are liars and they just want to get a paycheck then and so find one to, that you trust i just feel like they're trying to sell overpriced house everybody wants to do that regardless if you trust them or not it is in their best interest to sell this overpriced house because they're going to get that commission on this bigger price tag i hear you but that's with literally any type of anything that you do any type of business you have to watch out for the people that are going to try to come up off you and you need to find a good realtor because so my mom's friend from high school does real realty and she gave me her phone number okay well then you i like if your mom trusts her like i don't know if she trusts her (laughs) there are way too many there are so real like there are so many realtors yeah you can definitely find one yeah there's one that was on my street but she's so pushy she's like if are you sure you don't want to buy a house like last year i was like yeah prices are so that's who gave you that's who gave you the impression that all the well, fucking not only that, are- i also watched lots of tiktoks about people trying to sell these houses for insane amounts and somebody yeah. so some guy broke down the math he was like okay so this house is selling for eight hundred thousand dollars all right the yeah. median income of this area is x amount so it was like 50k a year. So, but in order to maintain the mortgage on this house, if you put $100,000 down, the mortgage on the house would have been 
you need to have be making a hundred thousand dollars a year just to pay that house off. Mm-hmm. But everyone in that area is only making fifty k a year. So, oh my god, my camera's dying. This is something I'm gonna have to figure out. Yeah, I can switch it to the other camera right now. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let me. I think we can stay on the call while I do it. Okay, we're back. Mm, sorry, guys, <laughs> my camera died, and I don't have extra batteries. Ew. So I'm here with my regular camera. This. The quality of next week's podcast on both ends is going to be better. Myself oh, and sexy. Joya, it'll be consistently good quality next week. This is, um, yes. I didn't have an extra battery. Yeah, no, this is, <laughs> I mean, this is our first week back on YouTube, y'all. Things are a little different and we are just, we're, we're, trying. we're ironing out the kinks. Yeah. Ironing so next week. the kinks period um i don't even but, remember what we were talking about i know me neither but okay we were talking about yeah it's okay uh oh houses buying houses whatever fuck yeah it. and realtors and blah 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 did you see that takashi got his ass kicked uh-huh i did okay so here i sure are. did i hate my empathetic little body because seeing that video made me feel so bad i hate him i like i literally hate him i think mm-hmm. he's a troll I think that he talks a bunch of shit, and sometimes when you talk shit, you get hit. <laughs> yeah, and you um, should. Uh, but watching that video, like I, it makes my body crawl. Like I hated watching I it. It just, I hate seeing somebody defenseless being downtrodden and beaten. <laughs> okay, yes, I agree with you. Same. I don't ever want to watch. I don't think anybody deserves to get jumped. Like I don't. I mean, like Nazis. Except yes, George Zimmerman. Right, exactly. Like, really fuck. I mean, Why is he's still walking unscathed. If you're also yeah. fucking gangster about it, bro, go yeah. find him. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. There's some people that, I mean, and it's also, yeah, like six nine. Like, you fucking made your bed, dude. So lie Lay in it. it. But it just doesn't but feel good. He, he wasn't rolling around with security. Like, I kind of, yeah. I guess, I just kind of feel bad for the guy because, like, he's an idiot. His money run out. He's an informant. Like, it's just all bad fucking... things are. You know, but he, he yeah. did all of these things to himself. Like, that's why yeah. I can't feel too bad. I'm like, man, nobody did this to you. I was just, um, it just made me think, have you watched The Boys on Amazon? No. It's like, it's like the characters are superheroes, but it's like an adult show. It's like, mm. they're like, it's like somebody capitalized on superheroes. And so it's like an, an industry and it's like, a, oh, okay. Um, but it's good. It's an it's an adult show, so there's like mm. drugs and sex and whatever. Love but it. there is this one villain who gets there. It sh- and this person is horrible. Like this person is really bad. They're like a Nazi and they're like racist and horrible. Yeah. And they get their ass fucking beat. I guess I don't have to hide the gender. It's a woman, and she gets her fucking ass beat at the end of the season. And I was watching it the other night, thinking I have never in my life been so happy to watch some. And it's a fake character, so it's fine. Yeah. There but it was like, people, yeah, if like yeah. if it's not a real or, person, that's the thing. Yeah, go ahead. It feels really good. I was gonna say to Joffrey in Game of Thrones. Did you watch Game? You didn't watch Game of Thrones either, huh? No. Dude, there is this one horrible fucking villain character who is just the worst, like, Mm -hmm. and he gets assassinated, and it's, like, the most satisfying, one of the most satisfying scenes in the whole series, like, there's this One of my favorite deaths of a character on screen is from the um, the show on Netflix, All of Us Are Dead. It's a Korean zombie. Yes, I still need to watch that. I still need to watch that. It's so good. Yeah. Um, And sorry, spoilers, Joya. But one of the characters is a (laughs) raging fucking cunt. I hate her so fucking much. And she's like actually fucking evil and like gets other students killed because she's just a bitch. Like not even like to protect anyone or save herself just because she's Mm -hmm. a fucking raging cunt. Um, And when she. That sounds like Joffrey in Game of Thrones. (laughs) She she gets bitten. I was like, yeah, because she was on her redemption arc when she got bitten, too. She was like trying to like be a better person person and help her. And I was like, I'm not buying it. Fuck her. Fuck her. Yeah. (laughs) When she died, I was like, yeah, Yeah, man, that is funny. As when how emotionally attached in different ways that we become to fictional characters. It's good writing and really good acting, honestly. Like, yeah, if you can get me to be a feel an emotion about your death you did something because i don't usually care what happens to humans (laughs) if the dog dies 
I'm turning the movie off. Yeah, yeah. I feel turning like you sh- probably should just avoid all like animal like yeah. <laughs> like when um, the horses die in the war battle scenes. I'm like, they didn't <gasps> choose this. I know. I just watched a. I just saw it. it's not a. It, it's not a war f- scene, but it was like an an like shooting scene, and I they killed the horse, and it was. I don't like that either. What the really fuck did like the that. horse do, bro? Except serve. Just- Except literally just be an animal that didn't have opposable thumbs. All right. <laughs> if if yeah. horses had thumbs, they'd be they'd be reckoning with us. Oh my god! Imagine, <laughs> holy shit, dude! I mean, that's basically a gorilla. Like the power yeah. of a horse. The power of horses, but with thumbs. Like I mean, gorillas are stronger than horses, probably. Right? Yeah. I I guess it's kind of hard to measure because yeah. they use their strength for different things. Exactly. A horse right, can yeah. pull like a thousand pounds. A gorilla can rip your head off of your shoulders. Like, you know, just like ah, like yeah. a Barbie, like a Barbie Every limb, doll. just like beep. 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 He said, Beep. Yeah. yeah he's like so. let me just pluck your arm off have you Man. seen the video i need to know if it's real or not there's a video of <laughs> like an ape like a gorilla of some sort he's a big guy and he's eating a, a pepper and the person behind the camera farts and he goes <laughs> disgusted like and <laughs> yes like, like, like bro the most human like expression like he's straight up like he does this like that's he- fucking <laughs> disgusting face and then like keeps eating his pepper and bro i swear to god i feel like somebody had to have put the fart on there because there's just no way that somebody was you no know like, way that he reacted that yeah, way yeah like i mean there's no way that someone was filming a gorilla in a fucking zoo he's in a cage so i don't know where he lives but oh, that's so I, he's behind i don't know i don't know exactly it's not leave it's, gorillas in the no, wild no there's a separator between whoever's filming and oh, the I'm animal aware i can't remember of that i just don't think that they should be in captivity no, I agree with you. I think zoos are stupid, but um, I think somebody added the fart to the video. To the I think video. maybe the animal was just giving that face, and somebody thought it would be funny to add a fart behind it because mm. it's just too. <laughs> so the timing is just too good. It's too yeah, perfect. like it's just like there's no way that I don't know because gorillas fart. <sighs> too either way he was not impressed with whoever was taking the video he's like the fuck are you here i need to find it now because i thought you would have seen it because it literally is one of those like 10 million likes like on fucking tiktok Uh, so anyway uh i'm gonna find uh it from six nine getting his ass kicked i did have other current events okay did you see that um of course you did we follow the same news page uh there's a bill in florida going around trying to get them to push to stop saying period, stop talking about their to, periods to or something. Period education, yeah, until sixth grade. How old were you when you learned about your period in school? Did you learn about? about I know you went to Catholic school. I don't know what their deal is. Well, I went to Christian school in elementary, and I don't remember hearing. But I wouldn't say because okay, I, I had a friend that started her period because I started mine at ten years old. Yeah, but I had a friend that started hers. Grade. Yeah. Well, it's one year. It was one year before sixth grade for me. Mm-hmm. But I had a friend who started hers when she was like eight. And mm-hmm. so I remember talking about it with her and friends. But I don't remember it being a part of my like, it might have been, but mm-hmm. um, I remember more the sex stuff when I got into like sixth grade, I think. No, and see, that's when I was in sixth grade, I started sex ed. But when I was in fourth grade uh, or fifth grade, I think maybe it was fifth grade, we had... um. It was like mommy night and you, everyone came to the school with their moms or whatever female garden that they had. They didn't have one yeah. that was okay, you know, and they explained what boobs were, how bras worked, what your period was. They showed the different types of period, like, uh, na- like sanitary things that they, and that's what everyone should have. Like I, I can't felt, yeah. felt excited about getting my first period. Like that's like, I was so prepared. I was like, I want to be a woman. I want to do all of these things. <laughs> Little Aww. did I know how fucking much they suck. Yeah. But, but I was excited about it. I was like, oh my God, like this seems like a glamorous, fun thing. It wasn't until I got older <laughs> that I realized how stigmatized, how shamed and how wronged you feel as a woman just for having something that ha- like you have no control over it um yeah 
like I remember like when you bleed through your pants or something like the horror and and shame and embarrassment that you feel mm-hmm. you there's nothing you can do about that if you didn't know it was coming like it's gonna happen <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean yeah. um and I just feel like they're it's a huge disservice to little girls to not teach them about their bodies um and I think that is amazing that you had that I that is like the most wonderful thing that I have ever heard Mm -hmm. like that they went through everything and like so you said it was after school yeah I was was like on an evening oh so the parents could come or I think it was called mommy I think it was called mommy and me and it was you you went with your mom and so I think it was really really good because it opened up the floor to have that conversation with your mom totally a lot of women are super uncomfortable talking about that thing with their child. Some some kids get their period and they have no idea that it's happening and that and they're, they, dying, they, they're dying. Yeah. Because their mom never crazy. told them about it or they didn't have a mom or whatever it may be, you know? It's just, it, I feel like that kind of, that was through the school. It was yeah. through the fucking school, but it was an after school program that you could opt into, obviously. And right. I I am so, so grateful for it. I am so, so grateful for That's it. That's amazing. Yeah, and I and and I I think because I had that seeing that other girls are getting that taken away from them makes me feel so so sad for them because there was this girl who DM'd me. She like messaged me and she was like they just shouldn't be teaching this stuff so young. Like even if they're getting periods, that should be a conversation that's happening at home, blah blah blah. And I'm just like, "I what the fuck are you talking about first of all? Like sex ed and learning about your body are two different fucking things, all right? We're not learning about how to have sex. We're not learning about that. We're learning about It's basically ovaries. like taking a shit. Yeah. Like it's learning like, like to how learn- to take a shit. That, because it know, happens like, to everyone. It's so irritating. And so like I wasn't learning about the boy stuff either. Like they had the boys separate learning their stuff. Even when I did sex ed in sixth grade, they separated the boys and the girls. The boys had their sex ed. The girls had their sex yeah, ed. And I was too. obviously- I was yeah, and I was in the Middle East. I was in the United Arab Emirates, which is granted one of the more liberal of the countries out there, but and it was in a it was in a an English speaking school, but like all those things, like it was still I was still getting sixth grade sex ed education, and that's when I learned about uh, how to have sex and birth and all of these other things that went along with it. But two like a year prior to that, I had learned about my period and I I knew it was going to be coming and I was just waiting for it, you know? And I feel like yeah. so many girls aren't in that same headspace and that's totally. really scary for me. Um and I would just have to say to anybody who feels like kids shouldn't be learning about that stuff that young, A, you're you're wrong. Um there is plenty and plenty and plenty of scientific accredited studies and evidence that shows that people who have less sex education end up pregnant younger more kids or just unplanned pregnancies like their health is worse off their health is worse off not knowing about their bodies there is documented studies behind this um and so just to think that because you don't want like people are just getting so fucking sensitive about every fucking thing like they think everything has like an over a a bigger connotation to it when it's just some girls get their period when they're eight i would rather know about my period long before i get it than find out a month before a week before the day before whatever it may be like the more time you have to think about it process it normalize it in your brain like I said I was excited me I was I was excited too I was just thinking about that when I got mine I remember like like running to my mom and being like I got my period like and I remember she would she didn't share the same excitement that I did and I was like why aren't you (laughs) happy for me I remember because it happened and I was like, I thought I'd be really happy, but I was like, oh my God, I think like hormones or whatever. I was like, kind of like feeling weird. And like me and my mom didn't have a close relationship. And so the idea of like telling her that this was happening was like really uncomfortable for me. Uh-huh. And so that was like not a fun experience. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. But I'm glad that like, I at least had the foreknowledge of what was happening to my body to be able to tell my mom, hey, I started my period. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. You knew what that was. As opposed to like going to your mom and be like, I'm bleeding f- from there. Yeah. What's, I'm dying. You know what yeah. I mean? Like totally. that's, uh, it's a, it's a shame. It is a shame. It is a shame. And I think that they should always, always, always offer education through the school that you can opt out if you want. If you really want to do that disservice to your child you and not teach them about- yeah, about and, and their it, nature. And perpetuate shame and the entire stigma behind it. Go ahead. Feel free to do that. But mm-hmm. I do not think that there should be legislation 
banning these conversations. That is what scares yeah. me. They're, they're That's people why are trying we- to ban it. Yeah, there's, I remember hearing just somebody say, like, the movement for parental rights oh, is going to, every, it's going to ruin many Everything. facets of life. Yeah, Like, so that's actually something that's happening recently. Like, that, um, that one woman who got shot by her student, the six-year-old, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they had put in a bunch of notices. They said, hey, we're having these issues. Like, hey, blah, 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 blah. The, but... And, like, the overall bigger picture is that the teachers are so, so scared to punish the kids or punish because their parents are going to sue them. The parents are going to do this. We talked about this. Yeah. We talked about this because the kid who committed the Michigan shooting, I believe, he – well, I don't know. God, I don't know where it was exactly. I'm sure there's been multiple shootings in Michigan. But there was one where the kid – had been in trouble literally earlier in the day. In the day. And he they tried and they told to the send parents him, to come pick him up and they said no. And they said no. Mm-hmm. And then he went and he killed like four people or something. Yeah. It's just the the lack of power that teachers have is scary. And you can yeah. see that students don't respect teachers anymore. I remember being so scared of my teachers. Not in the sense like they were going to physically hurt me, but in the sense yeah. that like I, yeah, you respected them. You were going to do what they asked you to do. Literally. Like you were going to respect the rules of the classroom. It's like. a part of, it's a microcosm of society. Yes. Like that's what the, you learn those courtesies and how to be a good citizen of the world in classrooms, which is like, there's also, you know, the argue or the argument that like our schools are really indoctrinating people to become like worker bees. Yes. But I think that there is an aspect of the classroom that it shows you how to work in a team. It shows you how to be a part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. And that's a invaluable life skill. Like being able to freaking be around people. There's seven, eight billion fucking people in the world. Like yeah. You need to be able to deal with people. And yeah, it's it's really sad. So sad. And it breaks my fucking heart. Because you, okay, yes, you have teachers in your family, people mm-hmm. in education. My sister-in-law is a teacher. And she, for him, my brother was a teacher for a long time. And he's in a different line of work now. Because they couldn't both be teachers. Because we don't fucking pay teachers enough. Bro, don't even start on the payment. Yeah. Well, it's just, yeah, it makes me so, it's just so sad that... Because, God, if there's one fucking job, job so important. yes, that is, like, <laughs> exponentially more important than so many others, like, that, the teaching is, like, that's where we need our best fucking people. That is who needs to be taken care of and respected, and not just by the fucking children, but by literally everyone, everyone. in the fucking world. Yeah. Like, believe it or not, your teacher might know what's better for your child than you do in the, in they've the span seen, of a they've, Yeah. They you know? exactly. They've seen your that teacher has seen hundreds, mm-hmm. if not, maybe thousands of students in their freaking lifetime. Like they, that teacher knows yeah. children and has seen so many different kinds of children, personality types, habits, everything. Yeah. And on that just, same yeah. note, there are definitely bad teachers. Oh, and, absolutely. Well, there's people who. Sh- why the fuck did you go into fucking work yeah. with kids? Like. You suck. But then, yeah, there's teachers who make a lasting impression on mm-hmm. students. I, I have a handful of those Me that too. I will literally never forget. Yeah. Literally, I used to follow one of them on Instagram for, oh, like, the sweet. longest time. I yeah. might I might still on my other page. I might still. LOL. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Brown. He's Aww, my favorite Mr. teacher. Brown. He, nice. he, he was my Marine teacher. And he, oh. the tests he would give um, – he would give you all correct answers, multiple choice. You had to choose the most correct one. And then he, no one ever, um, like basically what he would do is he would take the test and, um, he would curve it because most people didn't do great on his test because they were usually really hard on several occasions. I took his test, got more than a hundred percent and he threw my score out so that it wouldn't fuck the curve up. Oh wow! Yeah, no, that's that amazing. Class. Like I worked so hard to get yeah. those scores because I just wanted to impress him. I was like, "You're the dopest fucking teacher ever!" Like he was like I dad. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Um, 
he ended up getting fired, which is crazy. He was like, he was a little bit of a of a wild card in like the way that he would explain things. And he was like anti-government, anti like a lot. He was like, you guys shouldn't even go to college after this. You should just go abroad for two years. You should just go abroad. So one of those, yeah, yes. like a non-conformist, like just a real fucking dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. uh, obviously people are going to complain about that. I didn't. I He was a, the, the best teacher I ever had. Um, I even, and it's I also, even it's funny how certain teachers, their styles work for different kids is what I was mm-hmm. going to say. Yeah. So yeah. you got to be his little buddy. I did. I teach yeah. for his class. I loved being in his class. That's nice. He was dope. He was the best. I sold weed in his class. I bought weed once in time in his class. Oh my gosh. Well, I was TAing up. and the girl that I TA'd with, I was like, mm, let me get some weed. That was this was before I even smoked weed. That's <laughs> this was hilarious. I got it for Red Ribbon Week. Me and my friend Nikisa, we got high in my backyard and then we went to school. <laughs> What'd you smoke Red out Red of? Week. Oh, an um, apple, right? I think she had a pipe. I don't know. Oh. I because I think she smoked more than I did. I, I literally don't remember what we smoked out of, but I definitely remember that we smoked it in my backyard. And I thought it was just so badass because Red Ribbon Week, if you don't know what that is, it's like the say no to drugs week. And I was yeah. like, I'm smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what an indicator for my future life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> both of you. Both of you. Literally, that's hilarious. We're both in the cannabis industry now. That's funny. That's funny. All right. Do we have any fan questions? Yeah. I was just looking at my and Dev's DMs. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. At the um, end of every episode, we like to answer a fan question. So. Well, okay. This is funny because, okay, somebody asked. This is from Painting Pisces. Mm. Oh, my- I recognize that name from my stream. Oh, do you? I think. Yeah. Um, they said my birthday is next month and I didn't really celebrate my 21st. So I want to throw myself a little stoner party. Oh. Best tips, tricks and things I need. Um, also, if y'all want to throw in your best weed centered party stories, I'd love that. Tips um, for a good weed party. Make sure everyone brings some weed. That is a requirement to attend. You don't get to come empty hand. Unless you're trying to like fund it and you got deep pockets, go off, queen. Do that. Um Honestly, yeah, that's where my that's where my mind went. Funding it? Like getting so having buying, a bar doing that. Not yeah, everybody's well, got that that kind of No, I think left. maybe you yeah, not everybody's got that for sure. But I was gonna say, cause okay, remember, do you remember the Christmas party when we got a fucking edible cake? I don't know mm-hmm. if you ate any. I don't think I ate it either. Um, I definitely ate some, but, um, edibles are a great way to go. You should definitely have like a a big edible thing for people to try. And then just some cool glass things that people can smoke their weed out of. Yeah. That's definitely like having like your best, like your two best freaking pieces out and about Mm -hmm. like Mac Dizzle, you would have like your fucking parrot or parakeet or the, the rainbow parrot yeah yeah, yeah yeah but yeah i also definitely saying like bring your own like this is a good idea too yeah because <laughs> no because yeah. people take advantage and they're gonna take i remember when i used to go to weed parties i would just not even smoke the stuff that i was taking i would just hoard it and then i would take it home and then i would smoke it later i wouldn't even smoke it at the party and that's the point of it you're supposed to smoke it at the party that's true i guess but you i'm know. also a hoarder and i'm gonna, I'm gonna put that period. in my pocket and period. Yeah. Um, it's going in my pocket. <laughs> it's it's going home yes. with me. Uh, oh, no. I did not get one. I'll take, I'll take Exa- that. No, I don't have six in both pockets mm-hmm. right now. My twin like, sisters. Yeah. Our hair is the same. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well. Um. But yeah, I think having like fun stuff for people to smoke out of. And then I will say like, okay, as far as decorations, I literally just ordered this for my event that I threw a couple weeks ago, but we didn't use any of it. It's like a balloon pack. And like also like it's an 85 piece weed party supplies pack and it was nineteen dollars so oh. there's like a bunch of weed it balloons like glasses and, stuff. and it, it does it doesn't have any glasses oh. but um i had to order glasses separately because oh. we did have the glasses that have like the weed leaves on yeah. it um but there's like a banner that says happy birthday with like weed leaves on it and then oh, there's cute. a bunch of balloons and then there's like little like things for cupcakes oh, cute. um yeah so it's like a little weed party pack so that's another thing i would do is like just go get some like cheap amazon freaking weed themed decorations and put them up i also bought like little like weed confetti pieces too that's cute they that's were sprinkled all around the yeah thanks for I the think- question painting pisces painting pisces 
appreciate For anyone you. else out there who would like to leave us a question, please leave it in the comments right now. We would love to answer it. If you're still watching this video right now, comment uh, Naked Mermaid. <gasps> yes. Mm -hmm. I want to see her. How do mermaids how does fuck? It go? Uh, how do fish fuck? Well, they usually just like splooge their stuff into this into the ocean, and then the, those things meet. That's, well, that's probably actually, how. I don't, know, I don't even know if that's how, how fish fuck. Some fish probably get in to get in. I don't know. I know sea cucumbers. That's how they do it. They like shoot their eggs out, and then they shoot their sperm. There's out. There's no penetration. No, yeah. they don't even look at each other. Yeah, no fish that's how reproduce. I yeah, no. They lay eggs, and then the male releases its sperm into the water over the eggs. That's, That's disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> uh, yeah. It is not intimate. <laughs> not no. intimate. Sounds messy, actually. Oh, yeah, um, literally. What the fuck? But yeah, I think that's gonna that's gonna wrap it up for this week. We will see you guys next week. It'll be on this channel for now. If you would like to catch up on our old podcast, we have a full year of podcasts already um so please go ahead and take a look at the two girls one bong podcast channel it'll be in the pin, pin comment no it'll be in the description of this video yeah um and yeah you want to close this out jeej yeah thanks for tuning in guys if you enjoyed this podcast remember to share it with your friends and um if you don't i will staple your bottom lip to the back of your forehead <laughs> <laughs> thank you for i forgot what you said at the beginning <laughs> Oh, yay. Thanks so much for watching and or listening, guys. We literally love you. See you Thank next week. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Make good choices. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. Bye.